Hey what's going on guys Tanmay here for Telusco Learnings and welcome back to another video tutorial under JavaScript for beginners playlist and in this video we are going to be taking a look at some timing functions which are predefined in JavaScript which we can use and these are at times used in performing basic animations also so we'll see that as we move ahead in this series but let's first understand what these methods are so in this video we are going to be taking a look at four different methods the set timeout method clear timeout method set interval and clear interval so let's first take a look at the first one that is the set timeout method now it allows you to execute statements once after a particular interval okay so let's say in your program what you want to do is you want to perform some function or you want to perform some activity but you only want to do that after a particular set of time let's say you want to perform a function let's say when i click on the start button you want to perform some activity but after 10 seconds or after 5 seconds so this is where you can use the set timeout method because it allows you to execute particular statements basically a function or a set of statements only once after a particular interval so now here what we'll try to do is when i click on start we will try to print some text after 3 seconds have passed okay and then when i click on stop we'll add some more functionality using the clear timeout so you'll see that when we move ahead let's first try to add some feature to the start button so as you can see on the screen we have a basic html document we have the body we have two buttons and on click we are calling the start function and for the stop button we are calling the stop function and then in between we have this h2 tag which is showing the sum text so coming back to the javascript code let's first create a function which will print some message so i'm going to say function print msg that is print message inside that i'm going to say document dot get element by id i'm going to get the element of the h2 tag which is op over here i'm going to copy this and paste it i'm going to say dot inner html and i'm going to say 5 seconds have passed so this function i want to call after 5 seconds have passed right so now let's create the start function i'm going to say function start and inside this function what we have to use is the set timeout function now this set timeout method is basically coming from the window object and we've not really talked about window object so if you've seen the video on document object model in this playlist we saw that there is a hierarchy of objects and document object sits on top of the entire hierarchy however there is one more object which is basically the window object which represents the entire window inside which the html document or any other document is loaded so the window is basically one step above the document object but we did not take that into consideration because that is not directly used we most probably use a document object mostly but some features and some functionality which is provided by the window object so this method that is set timeout method comes from the window object so i can say window dot set timeout now it expects two arguments the first one is the reference to the function or the piece of code that you want to call or perform so the first one is the function and the second one is the time interval after which you want to execute that function so that is in milliseconds so in this case we want to call the function print message so i'm going to copy this and paste it over here and we have to call it after 5 seconds right so i'm going to pass 5000 because this has to be in milliseconds now notice that i did not add the brackets over here so i'm not giving a function call over here what i'm giving is a reference to this function okay so there is a difference between passing the reference and giving a function call so when i do this i'm just saying that refer this function and call it after 5000 milliseconds or 5 seconds so let's see if this works i'm going to click on start because on the button on click event we are calling this start function which will indirectly call print message using the set timeout method of the window object and this will be done after 5 seconds so let's count 5 seconds i'm going to click start and 1 2 3 4 5 and there you go we got the output that 5 seconds have passed so this was set timeout now what if you want to actually stop this feature in between so let's say you click the button and then you realize okay you've made some mistake in the print message and you want to stop it so this is where the clear timeout method comes into picture okay so let's add the stop functionality also so i'm just going to copy this and paste it over here and just change the start to stop and here i'm going to say window dot clear timeout okay now this clear timeout method of the window object expects one argument which is basically a unique id so this id is set when you actually set the inbuilt timer so there is something which is known as a timer which works behind the scenes to set this timer or set this timing so that timer is an inbuilt implementation in the browser which takes care of this scheduling time so what it does is 
that timer has a unique id and whenever you say set timeout the timer is set with a unique id so that unique id is returned from this method so what you can do is you can create a variable i'm going to say where id i'm going to set it to 0 initially and i can say id equals to and now this id variable that we created will store the unique id of that timer and that id is required when you want to clear that timer or reset that timer you can say or you can stop it okay so when i say clear timeout i'm basically stopping that timer from actually executing this print message if i do it before 5 seconds so let's see if this works and you can confirm it by clicking on the start and before 5 seconds pass if we click on the stop and this text does not change it will mean that our clear timeout method has worked perfectly fine right so let's click on this and count 5 and before we reach 5 we will click on stop and we will see if clear timeout has worked so i'm clicking on start 1 2 3 and i'm clicking on stop now 4 5 6 7 8 you can see that the seconds have passed but 5 seconds have passed text did not show up over here which means that our clear timeout worked perfectly fine if i just comment this out and again try it out let's say start 1 2 3 4 5 and you can see we got our text so since i had commented this text or this line of code the clear timeout was not called and we got the message so i hope you got the idea of why we need clear timeout if you want to stop the functionality which was set by the set timeout method you can do it but you need the id of that timer because you have to pass that id in the clear timeout method so these were the first two methods let's move on to the next two that is set interval and clear interval so now set interval allows you to execute statements repeatedly after an interval so set timeout was helping you to execute a statement or execute a function only once after a delay right after five seconds you were able to call the print message only once but what if you want to call the print message over and over again after every five seconds so this is where the set interval method comes into picture and using this you can actually create a basic timer or you can also create animations so in this video what we'll do is we'll create a basic timer so what we'll do is we'll change the text to one second two second three second after every second has passed so i have to use the set interval so first what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a variable named seconds i'm going to initialize it to zero in the print message what i'm going to do is i'm going to just say seconds which is this variable that we created and in the text i'm going to say seconds okay so this will actually have the value and then this will be just the text and we will call this print message over and over again using the set interval method okay so again set interval and clear interval are also methods of the window object so when i click on start we are calling this start function inside the start function we have to first call the set interval method so i'm going to just copy this and paste it over here and again set interval also expects two arguments the first argument is the reference to the function or the line of codes that you want to execute over and over again and the second argument is again milliseconds so pretty much the same like set timeout but just the difference is now print message is going to be printed over and over again after every five seconds but we want it to repeat after every one second so i'm going to pass 1000 milliseconds so let's see if this works i'm going to click on start and there you go zero second but right now you can see that it is not incrementing because we actually made a mistake over here because we also actually want to increment the value of seconds right so in the entire code we forgot to actually increment the seconds value so we have to actually increment it over here only so i'm going to say seconds plus plus so this is something that we forgot so whenever this function is going to be called it is going to print the value of current seconds it will add one and after one second again it will be called and since seconds is a global variable the value will be retained right so let's see if this works i'm going to click on start so zero seconds one second two second three seconds so as you can see our timer is going on and on because we've started it so right now if i click on stop you can see the timer has stopped okay so even by using clear timeout you can actually stop it but to clear the interval we actually use this clear interval method and not clear timeout i don't know how that worked but yeah again the same mechanism when you set the interval for the timer a unique id of that timer is returned from this method which is stored in this id variable and then when you want to stop that timer you use the clear interval method and pass that same id okay so that's why i have kept this id also as global variable so again just showing you one more time i'm going to click on start our timer will start zero seconds one second two second three second and so on and then when you click on stop it will stop if you start again it will start from the same value because these are global values and the document is still 
loaded if i refresh it it will start from zero again if i click on stop again it will stop so yeah this was set timeout clear timeout set interval clear interval at a very basic level these are some timing functions which are predefined and provided in javascript to directly use and you can use them to create a basic timer functionality so let's say you're creating an application which is taking some online exams and you want to have a timer which runs for a particular amount of time so you can use this set interval function to create that timer so yeah that's it for this video guys in the next video we'll again see some different use case of these timing functions especially the animations part and yeah if you like this video please give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments how this video was do share it with your friends and subscribe if you haven't already and see you guys in the next video peace